not only this country, but really the entire world often deal with. And so getting to introduce my home to others is always fun. And it's even better when I get to find people like you that have skills that I get to extract <laughs> and give to my neighbors to improve their situation. So it's it's a complete win-win uh, as far as I'm concerned. And um, and please, if uh, whether you're a listener or know someone who is, uh, please get in touch if you'd be interested in um, spending a, a spring break, a fall break, or particularly a summer working with us. Well, we'll put the information for Apple Red in the show notes. I wasn't fishing for compliments or anything, I, I promise. Uh, but so for people who are interested in coming out here or or somewhere similar, it doesn't necessarily have to be to Apple Red. But, you know, if you're someone who's looking to go work in a rural area, what's some advice that you would give them? Maybe if they're working, interested in working in the public interest, or even if they're not interested in working in the public interest. I mean, simple advice is just just reach out. You know, re- learn about the organization, learn about the place, and make yourself available. Uh, there, there is no replacement for, you know, kind of physically going and seeing the place, meeting the people. And for some people, the first time you might come is on your first day of work, and if so, that's terrific. But Again, whether you kind of just reach out through the phone or whether you're able to, to come in person, um, come get to know us. Obviously, you're super qualified to do lots of different types of work. Um, I think from your own introduction, you had omitted that you had clerked for the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals. Uh, you had done a Scadden Fellowship, which is really prestigious. You don't have to be here. Other people who are super qualified in doing this work also don't necessarily have to be here. You could be working somewhere else, making multiple hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars a year. What keeps you here and what keeps you doing this work and what inspires you to keep helping people in the way that you are? Well, the, the way you frame that makes me feel pretty dumb for being here. <laughs> no, but but, 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 but honestly... No, it, that wasn't the intention. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like, wait, this guy's so smart. Why? Anyway, no, but, no, but, no, but in a word, the reason that my wife and I are here is grandmothers. It's the fact that when I was finishing law school and she was finishing residency, and by the way, by the way she's certainly the 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 more qualified and the smarter of of our household and we I wanted to come back and spend some time with my grandmothers and when we started the family we wanted to be able to raise them around our mothers so that they'll be with their grandmothers um my wife and I we both grew up with lots of family around and when we thought about do we want to move to Brooklyn or do we want to move to East Kentucky the question about you know what relatives would our family have around that was just huge for us and so um you know again I, there's there's no amount of kind of career satisfaction or anything like that, that that I think can replace a lot of those things but even more so when when it comes to career satisfaction the amazing thing about being in a place like here is that i had opportunities from my first job to just do some amazing work you know being kind of lead counsel on appellate cases, something that if I were at the big firm in New York, you might not get to do until five, six years into it. So when you're at a place where there is such a need, it gives you opportunities to really seize the reins and kind of enact your vision of what you want to do professionally. I don't see it so much as a handicap to be doing what I do in a rural area. I think about you know, I, I have so much latitude and opportunities to do what I think needs to be done professionally, and it's really exhilarating. Well, do you think that there are things that could be done on a local or national level, either or both, to keep people like you here, just extra sweeten the pie a little bit or incentivize people to leave? Because it is maybe the exception that super qualified people who are born in this region stay in this region, especially after they've left and then are considering whether or not they should come back, what are the types of things that we should be considering to help people make the choice to stay here in addition to bringing people who are not originally from here to come by and help? If not, come help, see how beautiful it is, and then stay. Yeah, I mean, I think that there's there's a lot that could be said to that issue. I mean, kind of more broadly about I mean, what should we be doing at a national policy level to reinvigorate rural America. And I, I think that one of the biggest ones is that I think that culturally we need to stop knocking down rural America. 
and think about it as a place that you should only be if you're a loser. You know, there's a sense that, uh, you know, I think we've had this stratification in our country of, you know, winners and losers. And you see and often your kind of high income urban areas that they're becoming, I think, increasingly disconnected from, you know, some lower income rural areas like here in Appalachia. And, and there's this sense that one of them is for winners and one of them is for losers. And, and I think that when we think that way and when we accept that way of thinking that really that's as much of a problem as any other policy choices we can make. Now, with that being said, there are many public policy things that we should do. I mean, a, a big one just has to do with how are we funding education? You want to talk about it, as long as we're funding education based on property tax values, then that stratification is only going to get worse. And then even once you want to take a step further, if you're looking at higher education, you think about what are people doing with their student loan debts? If you need to make insane levels of income just to pay off your student loans, then that's going to discourage people from coming to rural areas. So I think that we both need to think about how are we funding education on the front end? And then also, what are we doing with those that have student loan debt? And I think one of the best things you can do to help rural America is to make sure that people where there is low property values can get good schooling and those who want to come back can do so and still pay their mortgage. So I think we're running out of time here, and I just wanted to ask before we go, standard question of mine, what do you think that all of our listeners should know? What do you want people to either take away from this conversation or it's an item that we haven't necessarily covered yet? The main thing I want people to know is that Appalachian, Kentucky is a beautiful place. And here at Apple Red, we have the privilege of getting to work on a wide variety of interesting issues for great people who have real needs. And so whether what you care about is child welfare, you know, helping make sure that their home and their family situation is good as it can be, or whether you want to work in consumer law issues having to do with consumer debt, health care, whatever it is, we get to do some of that here at Apple Red in just a completely beautiful environment here, snuggled between these beautiful green mountains. And so I hope that people reach out, get to know us, Evan, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much for speaking with me today. Right. Thank you so much, David. Peace. And that's a wrap on another episode of UC3P. Big thanks to everyone at Apple Red, including Rob Johns, Tammy Hatfield, Evan Smith, LaDonna LaMaster, Lori Elam, Jamie Marcellette, Mary Going, Dana Branham, Christy Goff, Kelly Ward-Wallen, Kathy Burke, Barbara Collins, Paul Woosley, Katie Mullins, Christy Stevens, Joanne Harvey, and Lana Gresham. I miss you all terribly and can't wait to visit soon. Special thanks also go to the Rural Summer Legal Corps. If you're a law student and you want to spend a summer helping people in a rural area, then you should definitely check them out. Also, thanks again to the University of Chicago Law School for funding public interest students during the summer. That program is really appreciated. Credits go to me, David Raban, for producing, engineering, interviewing, and editing. Our communications director is Thomas Krasnation. Our finance director is Donovan Harvey. Our publisher is Haas Yano. Our intro music is Knockout 2 by Detubi, and our outro music is Yes, Yes, Y'all by Matt Large. And our cover art was designed by Sharin Raban. If you want to hear more podcasts, check out our website, uc3p.org. And if you want to contact us, our email is the uc 3 p at gmail.com. My name is David Raban, and stay tuned. We'll be back next week discussing nationalism and populism with political science professor Eric Oliver. You know, puns can be mystifying. They can. <laughs> do you have, okay. Do you have a favorite pun? Oh, 
now that you're telling me. I have like a pun sickness where if there's something awkward, I will inadvertently pun on it. Yeah, in picnus. front of people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not even funny. It's Has that just, happened to you? I have I had a picnic? Have you, yeah. Uh